This is chapter number three, Nazism and the rise of Hitler. So, what is Nazism and how Hitler rose? We'll talk about that. Now, we'll start with a story, a very small story, and then we will go to the detail with the backdrop of this story. We will not discuss about the Nazism and uh, Hitler just now, but you will soon come to know that who was Hitler and how Nazism came into effect and how it affected that uh, part of the world and the world as a whole. So, in the spring of 1945, there was a little 11 year old German boy called Helmut. Now he was trying to sleep. He, he overheard his parents discussing that whether they must kill themselves only or they must take the children with them. That means all the family should die. Now why his father was speaking or why his father has that in intention is that the allies, we will talk about these allies. Will these allies will do exactly what he and his uh, say Nazi counterparts they did to the Jews and other people. Next day, his father, Helmut's father, killed himself, and then Helmut didn't eat in the house because he was afraid that the that his mother would poison him. What Helmut went through and why his father killed himself? Because his father was a Nazi and he was a supporter of Adolf Hitler. Now Hitler was a dictator and the main thing is was which it came a lot after the war ended that people came to know what was done by him and the Nazis in Germany and nearby. So there uh, is a story behind this that in May 1945, first of all Germany surrendered to the Allies. Now there are two powers because it was a world war. Allies were the Allied powers in initially led by United Kingdom that is Britain and France. In 1941, they were joined by USSR and USA that is USSR, USA, UK and France on one side and then the Axis power Germany, Italy and Japan on the other side. So, this was the war that is the world war. Germany uh, surrendered to the Allies in May 1945 and anticipating what was coming Hitler Hitler and you can also see uh, Goebbels Goebbels on the left so they committed suicide and there was at the end of the war there was international military tribunal at Nuremberg it was set to prosecute the Nazis uh, post the war for war crimes and crimes against humanity. So, Germany, the axis of axis power, those actions, uh, these were called as crime against humanity. And what happened after that is this under the shadow of the Second World War, which took place, we just talked about the two parties. Germany had waged a genocidal war that is mass murder of selected group of innocent civilians of Europe. So they killed or the, the I am not talking about all the Germans, the Nazis uh, we are talking about. So how many of them killed or this Hitler and all other people 
they killed six million Jews, Yahudi, two hundred thousand Gypsies, and one million Polish civilians, seventy thousand Germans also. See, Germans killed German who were considered mentally and physically disabled, and various other political opponents. So this was Nazis' unprecedented killing, and this was done by gassing them with a poisonous gas, and the killing centers, like the which was found in Auschwitz. So the Nuremberg Tribunal, after the Second World War, sentenced only eleven leading Nazis; other were imprisoned just because they don't want to do. What uh, was done after the First World War? After the First World War, the Allies did not want to be as harsh on defeated Germany as they did in the First World War. So everyone came to feel that the rise of Nazi Germany could be partly traced back to the German experience at the end of the First World War. So what we have seen here. First, let me tell you, genocidal means killing of large scale, uh, leading to destruction of large sections of people. Genocide means a community or a people belonging to certain religion, certain uh, caste or creed, especially the majority killing these minorities. This is genocidal or geno genocide. So, what we have seen here is, let me summarize it. See, First World War. German Germany was Axis, you know. So Germany, Austria, Hungary, they fought with others. After the First World War, German, the Germans, they lost, and everything was, uh, say, showered upon them. That is, the Germans are responsible. So there was. We'll talk about all these. So there were uh, some some treaty, etc. And there was a lot of, uh, you can say, humili humiliation for the Germans. So this German, most of the things were done, we will just discuss about that. Then all these things happened and Hitler came. Hitler came and Hitler said, and as a personality, he said that I am going to counter, I am going to give back all the you can say the glory which German uh, enjoyed because the glory was devastated here after First World War. Now, German, this Germany went with Hitler, and there was a Second World War. Again, we'll talk about who fought the Second World War. After that, Germany again lost, again lost, and this is the story. After the Second World War, what happened? But when the first uh, Second World War ended, it was known that what has happened in Germany was really unprecedented, complete genocide. But we talk about uh, Hitler as a killer, right? But let us see that how it, uh, how what was the background, what actually happened. Can we say that he was actually uh, the way people present him? You'll know by now, just after a few minutes. So, the birth of Weimar Republic. Germany, a powerful empire in the early years of the 20th century, fought the First World War, and along with whom? Uh, Austria and Hungary. And they fought with England, France, and Russia. Now this uh, war stretched on and Germany initially made a gain by occupying France and Belgium, but the Allies, previously it was England, France and Russia, but when the United States entered, Germany was defeated and the central, these, these are called the central power, these are called the uh, central powers, these are Allies and U U.S. entry, these allies, they won. And the central powers, that is Germany and other countries, they lost. 
Now, after the defeat of uh, Imperial Germany and the abdication of Emperor, it gave an opportunity to parliamentary parties to recast the German polity or German politics because the things have Germany has been defeated. So, a National Assembly met at Weimar, that is why we call it, it as a Weimar Republic. So, the, the National Assembly met at Weimar and they established a democratic constitution with a federal structure. Now, the deputies were now elected properly to German parliament or Reichstag. This is also the name of German parliament and on the basis of voting, cost cast by all adults including the women also. This happened after the law, the lost or Germany losing, then after that this happened. So, this Weimar Republic was not well received by German people, right? Because they thought that they are responsible or this is the responsibility they endowed upon uh, the uh, Germans especially that at the end of First World War, they were not well received. There was a peace treaty, but before we go ahead, let me tell you that this is the figure that Germany, this one, in 1914, but after this, this Rhineland, this is a demilitarized zone after the First World War and most of the places, good places, the resourceful places were taken from Germany. And these were the land being taken from Germany. These were the land taken from Germany because Germany lost miser miserably to the Allies. So there was a peace, peace treaty of Versailles where Allies, that is those who won, was very harsh, very harsh. Germany lost overseas colonies. One tenth of its population, 13 percent of its territories, 75 percent of iron, and 26 percent of coal to France, Poland, Denmark, and Lithuania. Okay, and also uh, they did demilitarize Germany to weaken its power. It was they all thought that it is Germany who is responsible for the war. So the German has Germany has to pay uh, six billion. This as a compensation. Okay. And there was a Rhineland I showed you in the map. This was a resource rich place and this was occupied by the Allied armies. Now, because of this, many Germans held the new Weimar Republic for the defeat, not only for the defeat, but the disgrace, the disgrace, the hum humiliation caused because of this Versailles Treaty. So, what was the effects of the war? Because war, Germany lost. So, Germany, it was financial and psychological also. German uh, went to, to the war with uh, taking money that is on debt. So, it was the war guilt and national humiliation and because the German has to pay the compensation also. So. Uh, everyone was mocking the normal criminals, uh, Germans as normal criminals. So, the first world war, as we said, the after the first world war, it was a deep imprint on the European society and polity. All the soldiers were given a lot of importance now. Politicians and publicists they laid great, great stress on the need of men to be aggressive, strong and masculine. Media also glorified their, uh, their life. The men who are living in trenches, they are glorified. But in reality, they face poisonous gas, enemy shelling, right? So, there was an aggressive war propaganda and national honor, nationality, it grew up. So, democracy was not very popular and it was a fragile idea at that time because there was instability, the war was just happened and things were going on like that. So, there was a political 
radicalism and economic crisis. Now, the birth of the Weimar Republic, it actually coincided with what was happening in the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. Soviet, uh, Soviets of workers and sailors, they were established in many cities here also. The political atmosphere in Berlin was charged with demands of Soviet style governance because they these uh, that these spirit coincided with that Soviet revolution. So everyone met socialist, democratic, and Catholic uh, these Catholics. They wanted to give a shape to democratic republic. But the Weimar Republic uh, crushed the uprising with the help of war veterans. And uh, the organization was called as Free Corps. So the anguished, this partisans, as I just mentioned, let me go back. At this time, when this there was a political radicalism, because Weimar Republic coincided with the revolutionary uprising of the Spartacist League, just like the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. So the Weimar Republic, it tried to crush, crush this, uh, you know, Spartacist type of uh, uprising which can take place here also. So the anguished Spartacist, they founded Communist Party of Germany because they wanted the the communism to come here. The communist and socialist, they uh, become irreconcilable enemies. That is, they were inner fighting going on. And here, it was uprising or Hitler came in. Both the revolutionaries and militant nationalists, they crave for radical solutions. But this political radicalization was not only the thing it was highlighted or heightened by the economic crisis in 1923 as we as i just mentioned germany fought the war with loans and had to pay the war reparations in gold that is make up for wrongdoing reparation depletion means reduce empty so the gold reserves were depleted and in 1923, Germany did what? They refused to pay because they don't have any money. So, French did what? They occupied the leading industrial area of Germany, that is Ruhr, and claiming all, all the, the area coal. But Germany retaliated. It was a passive resistance and they printed paper currency. And because of this, so much money was in circulation. The, the currency, the German currency at that time, mark fell. If uh, we can go back, the US dollar, one US dollar was equal to 24,000 marks. See how many notes will, will be, uh, will have to be carried. If you see, these baskets and cards are being loaded at a bank in Berlin with paper currency for wage payment. Just after that, in July, it was 353000, that is 353,000 marks for one dollar. And it rose to numbers like 4621000 marks in August. And then it was, the numbers are so high, it went, went to 9886000 marks by December. And in December, it went to trillions. So the mark collapsed. The good price sold. It went all time high and this is called as hyperinflation this is a situation when prices rise phenomenally high as you see by these numbers but america came intervened and they bailed out germany and they have a crisis plan dawes plan we call it. and something was done for the germans if you see at that time these are the homeless germans quick queuing up for the night shelter, that is, they want to sleep. So, there were years of depression also. After this, there was some, some stability because American came into rescue. But it didn't go for long. Because of the Wall Street exchange crashed in USA. 
this effect or ripple effect came to germany also and all other countries right because the usa uh, the national income fell by half factories were shut down exports fell uh, farmers were badly uh, hit and speculators withdrew their money from the market and when they withdrew the money from the market you see that what will happen it was german economy went to economic crisis so by 1932 the industrial production was reduced to 40% of the 1929 levels worker lost their jobs number of unemployed were 6 million so you know all were jobless so this economic crisis it created anxieties and fear in people all you know middle class or any anybody you know they are going to be uh, let me tell you the wall street exchange this is name of the world's biggest stock exchange located in usa if you see these people are sleeping in line because they are un- unemployed uh, depressed this was all happening there so this there was a chance people fear that there will be there is this is a very uh, long word this is called as pro let uh, this let renaissanceization it's a very uh, difficult word to pronounce okay so this is to become uh, impoverished to the level of working class that is the the good earning class will become the labor class okay so this was an anxiety of the people politically also weimar republic was fragile the the constitution of weimar was inherently uh, it consists of certain defects so it made things unstable and vulner- uh, vulnerable also okay and there was other thing also there was a defect called article 48 in this the president can use its power to impose emergency this is very important the president can use the power to impose emergency civil right uh, and rule the rule by decree so within this short time it, this article 48 was immensely used weimar republic saw 20 20 different cabinet average day is 239 days so you can see how fragile and how vulnerable this regime was so people lost their confidence in the democratic parliamentary system because weimar republic was eventually not uh, solving their problem we, we saw the problem they had now came hitler there was a crisis in economy polity and society that actually uh, were the backdrop how hitler rose to power hitler born in austria in 1889 his youth was in poverty when the first world war broke he came to army he acted as messenger and corporal and also earned certain bravery medals and when the german were defeated he was horrified and also he was furious because of the versailles treaty so in 1919 hitler joined a very small group called german worker party and he subsequently took over and it was national socialism german workers party now but eventually the previous german worker party and then national socialism german workers party it became the nazi party that we are talking about this party became the nazi party so in 1923 hitler planned to seize uh, control of Bra- uh, the bavaria march to berlin and capture power he failed arrested and went to treason and he was later released the nazis could not effectively mobilize uh, popular support if you see uh, there was a great depression that nazis become uh, a mass movement but uh, things as we saw that the conditions were not very good so nazi propaganda it stirred hopes in the people of germany for a better future because things were not going well weimar was not doing well so in 1920 in 
Nazi party just got 2.6% vote in the Reichstag, that is the German parliament. But after four years, 1932, this party, Nazi, became the largest party with 37% votes. If you see, this is how Hitler is being greeted at the party congress in Nuremberg. So they took uh, the help of propaganda, specific type of message directly aimed at influencing the opinion of people, that is through poster films and speeches. So Hitler, why he rose to power? There is no, not just that people were not having a very good life, but Hitler was a very, very powerful speaker. His words motivated people. He promised that he will make a strong or build a strong nation and what injustice German people went through, uh, through this Versailles treaty, he will restore this dignity. He promised the employment and secure future for the youth. He also promised to weed out all the foreign in influences and the conspiracies against Germany. So it was a new style of politics. If you see. This is the Nuremberg rally in 1936. How many people are here? This is how they, they you can say propaganda, you can say they spread their message. You know, it's, it's the different way to think. Here also, if you see, there is Hitler, he is Hitler addressing the SA and SS. That is a proper planned and, you know, organized way of Speaking. So uh, this st his style, he understood the significance of the uh, rituals and spectacle of how to mobilize the mass, the normal people. They held massive rallies. If you see the pictures, it it, it shows that the uh, you know how they demonstrated the support for Hitler and try to unite the people. The red banners with swastik. The Nazi salute, the ritualized uh, rounds of applause after the speech. These were the uh, show of power of Hitler. So, as we say that the, you can say it as a propaganda. It projected Hitler as a Messiah, the savior. He can only uh, came out or you know relieve people from the distress. So this is the people wanted because uh, the dignity and pride of people were shattered and they just want something to happen and they saw it in Hitler. So how this destruction of democracy, democracy took place? On 30 January 1933, President Hindenburg, he offered chancellorship to Hitler, highest position in the cabinet of ministers. And uh, one of the Nazis has managed to rally the conserv conservatives also. As Hitler acquired the power, Hitler dismantled the structures of democratic rule. There were fire and things were, you know, burned. And uh, he uh, turned on the uh, arch enemies, the communists, and most of them, they were packed off and just sent to the concentration camps. So these are concentration camps, a camp where people were isolated and detained without the process of law. Uh, typically it was surrounded by electrified barbed wire fence. Nobody could leave. So if you see, the depression of communists were very severe. And uh, if the files, because there a mystery fire broke, everything was finished. On 3rd March 1933, famous, it was a famous enabling act was passed by Hitler and this established dictatorship in Germany. That is why we call Hitler as a dictator. It, this, this act gives all the powers to sideline the parliament and rule by the decree. Decree means one rule, means a person can make decisions. All political parties and trade unions were banned. Only Nazi party and affiliates were allowed. C complete control over economy, media and army and judiciary was 
taken over by the Nazis. Special forces, surveillance and security forces were made and uh, uh, the regular police were there. Ap apart from that, it was uh, uh, storm troopers and guest, uh, the Gestapo, secret state police, SS, the protection squad, criminal police, security service, SD. So, they give the extra constitutional powers to all these new forces. So, now people can easily be detained in Gestapo torture chambers, rounded up, they can be sent to these concentration camps, they get deported, they, get, they can be arrested without any legal proceedings. So, this police forces, they acquired powers to rule with impunity. That is, nobody can question them. Nazism and the rise of Hitler. So, what we have seen up till now is how uh, after the First World War, Weimar Republic came into being and because of the, because the, there were a chain of events, the uh, normal public were not living a very good life because of various reasons, because of the economic crisis, unemployment, etc. After that, uh, Hitler came. Nazi party won by 37% voting percentage and then there, are, there were things that happened. Now, we will discuss about the reconstruction. For the economic recovery, Hitler assigned this responsibility to Jalmar Kshat, who aimed for at full production and full employment uh, through a state-funded work creation program. And the German superhighways and this Volkswagen, this is the people car. If you see that here, you can easily see that these posters are indicating that owning a car is no longer a dream for an ordinary worker also. So he did a good job. When it comes to foreign policy, Hitler also acquired success here. He pulled out of the League of Nations in 1933. And he reoccupied the Rhineland, rich, rich uh, resources area in 1936 and also integrated Austria and Germany. What was the slogan? Because the Austrians, Germany and Hungarians, they were almost similar. So, one people, one empire, one leader. So, Australia, Austria and Germany, it got in integrated. And he also uh, won and then went on to the, uh, you know, German speaking, uh, the student land and Czechoslovakia, that is, there was uh, some support from, you know, unspoken support, you can say, from England. Because England thought that the uh, treaty which happened in Versailles was too harsh on the Germans. But Hitler uh, continued his, uh, you can say, grabbing. But Schatz, uh, the economic advisor, you can say, had advised Hitler that he should not invest hugely in his ideas of rearmament at, as the state still ran on deficit financing. But these kind of people, Sketch has no place in Nazi Germany. Sketch had to leave. So, this is uh, a picture of expansion of Nazi power at the time, Europe 1942, if you see. So, this is the Greater Germany. These are the powers which, which were uh, cooperating with the Axis. That is these. And then these green parts, dark green parts, these are territories under German occupation. So, German has now Poland, Ukraine, uh, France, part of Norway. And then light uh, green, these are, this is Italy and its territories. And these Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Ireland, they were at that time neutral countries. So, Hitler chose war as the way out of uh, approaching the economic crisis. The idea is to expand the territory and to gain the resources of those territories. But in September 1939, the, he did two mistakes actually. First was he invaded Poland. So, there was a war with, with France and England. In September 1940, there was a tripatriate because three countries were involved. There was a pact was being signed by Germany, Italy and Japan. 
and this strengthen hitler's claim to international power as an international power all the regimes nearby were puppet uh, supportive of nazi germany and he was that is hitler was by the end of 1940 he was the you can say axis or pinnacle of the power of the power now hitler has a dream to conquer eastern europe he wanted a good food supply and larger area living space for the germans his people now he did the second mistake he attacked soviet union in june 41 this was the historic blunder but here the ex the hitler exposed the german western front to british aerial bombing and the eastern front there were two fronts where they they were fighting the western front because the british were bombing aerially and the eastern front where they have powerful soviet armies soviet didn't leave them soviet red army inflicted and a crushing and humiliating defeat on germany at stalingrad and they didn't stop there they came uh, you know behind them till berlin berlin and see berlin is in germany after that soviet hegemony over the entire eastern europe for half of a century established thereafter but usa was resistant usa did not want to come into the war because usa has already seen what happened in the first world war but japan the ally of germany it did something very very dramatic in the pearl harbor us naval base japan bombarded that is it bombed us base at pearl harbor now us has no option but to enter the war so now the second world war us entry is there but as us is was the powerful country as us entered the second world war ended with massive hitler's defeat and bombing of hiroshima nagasaki by atom bomb in japan so this is what happened because hitler wanted to uh, his he as its own ideas he wanted to capture the lands and he did first he went to poland and then he without uh, you know thinking uh, for a second about soviet he tried to entered so soviet union and you know soviet union and at that time became was very powerful and us if hitler would have known that if us has entered he has to lose so after that we all all know what happened with hitler the he committed suicide along with various other nazi members so what was the nazi world view nazi has nazi people or nazi you can say thought has belief and he, they has set of practices and this is synonymous a nazi ideology and hitler's world view was you know uh, was kind of kind of equal synonymous they they follow a racial hierarchy in their hierarchy the blonde that is the blue eyed nordic german aryans were at the top while the jews yahudis were at the lowest rung and in between others were there depending upon their external features let me tell you again so on the top on the top it is nordic german aryans then in the lowest rung of this hierarchy there were jews in between all others were there and they suggested that because darwin and various other uh, scientist or the people who gave certain ideas of struggle for existence and the the species would survive only when it would adapt themselves to the changing climatic conditions so charles darwin darwin and herbert spencer they gave certain ideas and hitler used its these ideas to his benefit and he argued and the nazis argued that the strongest race that is their race will survive and other should perish 
there is uh, another hitler's ideology which was geopolitical that is leben saram or living space he wanted that the new, he wanted some new territories and the resources in order to these higher raised or you can say good germans to be to have a place to settle that is why he encroached he entered various countries and as we saw that poland was the first experimentation he did so establishment of racial state now let me tell you about nordic german aryans one branch of those classified as aryans and they lived in north european countries and had german or related origin and mainly they were blue eyed and with a you know as we saw that uh, golden golden color or blonde blue eyed with golden color of hairs so when uh, nazi came to power because they have certain ideas they started eliminating all those which are undesirable now people would think that the undesirable were only those who are not germans but it is not that nazis only wanted pure pure and healthy nordic aryans that means others are all undesirable only they should reproduce that is pure and healthy nordic aryans and others should be they are undesirable so what they want just eliminate them there was a euthanasia program that is those germans which are mentally or physically not fit they are also they also come in this category of elimination if you see here police is calling the gypsies who are being deported to auschwitz and auschwitz is the area where all bad thing happened people were killed gas chambers etc so jews mostly jews uh, were the main community who faced the wrath of nazi nazi people they were the mostly undesirable they were the most undesirable then gypsies were there other inferiors because germans only believed in biological purity of superior aryans even the russians and poles were considered subhuman when uh, germany occupied poland the and the part of russia the civilians being captured were put into slave labor they were also strong polish and russians are you know well heighted well built people but they, many of them died because of hard work and starvation but jews again they remained the worst sufferers of nazi germany because there was a some traditional christian uh, backdrop behind that it was believed that the the jesus christ was killed by jews so they were stereotyped as as killers of christ and unsurers that means they cannot be believed they trade they trade and they money lend jews and they often lived in ghettos that is a, a spe special area in the outskirts with only one community living but all the violence expulsion periodically they have to face and uh, there was there was a uh, solution to that jews uh, may always convert to christianity but hitler didn't want that they he he said even if they convert they will remain the uh, genetically they will be jew only so they need to be totally eliminated so from 1933 to 1938 nazi terrorized pauperized and segregated the jews compelling them to leave country and in the next phase that is 1939 to 1945 they want them to kill so eventually they took them to gas chambers in poland and kill most of the jews there was a racial racial utopia nazi were considered as murderers racial because you know they were doing genocide most of the mo the northwestern poland it was annexed by germany and they were forced to leave the homes and properties poles then were herded like cattle 
and in the other part which is called as the general government and this is the destination of undesirables as nazi thought polish intelligent people intelligentsia they were killed murdered and polish children who look like aryans like them that like nordic german aryans race they were sent to actually there was race experts who decide whether these these uh, children are good for them or not otherwise they were just deported or you know may, maybe they are killed and uh, last some of the pictures i would like to highlight that this is the one fried cars jews were were pushed inside this and they were taken to the ultimate uh, you can say fate that is death so what were the steps to death let us understand this by uh, pictorially first they were excluded from 1933 to 1939 that is the jews have no right uh, as a citizen that is they started boycotting jewish business Ex uh, they were excluded uh, or ex uh, expulsion of their uh, the jews from german services took place and they were forced to sell and con the properties of them were confis confiscated even the their uh, religious place synagogue were burned this is a uh, example that is the park bench which says this is for only aryans not for others not for jews etc and here is a picture of the north sea bathing resort and this is showing that this is free of jews then after that the step 2 was ghettoization that is first was you have no right to live among us as citizens then you have no right to live among us so what they did they wanted them to go to live as means away from them so ghettoization was there as i said that the place or area where hunger starvation disease uh, poor hygiene deprivation where these jews lives and they were forced to live there if you see this jew is having nothing these are jews then this stage 3 was annihilation 1941 onwards and these you know one person is seen here he is killed while trying to escape the concentration camps were enclosed with live wires with electricity and these are the pile of clothes outside the gas chamber because all of them were wearing this they are killed and these are concentration camps these are all the shoes uh, for the final solution the prisoners mostly jews and this these are the concentration camps what was the life of youth in germany hitler uh, was fanatically interested in the youth of the country he wanted to teach children nazi ideology if you see here this is a classroom scene it is depicting a lesson on anti uh, sentiment uh, semitism racial anti semitism so all schools were cleansed and purified jews if they are teachers they are they were uh, dismissed children were segregated germans and jews could not sit together and finally the jews which were undesirable children and the physically handicapped that is all uh, people who or children who are mentally or physically weak and gypsies they were thrown out of the school and finally to gas chambers good germans they need to go to schooling for prolonged for ideological training the school textbooks were rewritten and racial signs were introduced to justify the nazi ideas and the jews were stereotyped children were taught to be loyal submissive they need to hate jews and they need to worship hitler everywhere it was just against jews and pro hitler hitler believed in boxing that they want children to be iron hearted strong and masculine and this youth organization were uh, given the responsibility to educate the german youth 
in the spirit of national socialism. 10 year old had to enter the Jung walk. At 14, they have to join Nazi youth organization, that is Hitler Youth. They learn to worship war, glorify aggression and violence, condemn democracy, hate Jews, communists, gypsies and all those categories which are undesirable. That, that is what they are being taught. After that, usually at 18, they uh, serve for armed forces, enter one of the Nazi organization. So, Youth League of the Nazis were founded, was founded in 1922 and then it was later named as Hitler Youth. So, this is how this happened because all the other organizations were banned. Jungwok was a Nazi youth group of children below 14 years of age. Here is a picture that the Jews teacher and the pupils, they are expelled while others are dancing. Classmates are happy. If I uh, show you some picture, it's so disheartening that these are Jews. They are being bought at death factory gas chambers and they will be killed shortly. See. And these are the race, the desirable children which Hitler want to reproduce, to grow. And these, this is one of the good looking Polish children who will be checked for, you can say, by the uh, race expert. A Nazi has some cult of motherhood also. What? Na children of Nazi Germany uh, was re were repeatedly told that women were racially different. And they, the fight for equal rights of men and women is wrong. Boys were taught to be aggressive, masculine and steel hearted. Girls were told that they should become mother. Uh, they need to create good Nordic Aryan children. And the girls has to maintain purity of the race and distance themselves, especially from the Jews. Look after the home, teach their children the Nazi values. In 1933, Hitler said that women are very important, citizen of his country. But all these mothers are not treated uh, equally. Women who bore racially undesirable children were punished. And those who produced these racially desirable children were awarded. They were, they were favored in hospitals and also given concessions in uh, shops, theater tickets and railway fairs. They were awarded for having, you know, uh, more children. Like four children, they get bronze cross, bronze uh, award or medal. Six children, they get, they get silver. And if they have eight and more, they get gold. So, the Aryan women who deviated from these codes were severely, severely punished. Especially uh, who have contact with Jews, Poles and Russians. They, they were paraded with shaved heads, blackened face and placards handing, uh, hanging and saying that I have sullied the honor of the nation. So, this was criminal offense. There was, there was an art of propaganda. The Nazi regime know the how to use the language and media. So uh, Nazi never used any word like kill or murder. They have special terms. Mass killing was called a special treatment. Final solution uh, for the Jews and euthanasia for the dis disabled. This is mass killing. Selections and disinfections. Evacuation means just send them to gas chambers. And the gas chambers were called as disinfection areas. They were built like bathrooms. They have proper sh shower heads. So, media was carefully used because they need to, pro uh, to pop popularize their worldview. And they spread their ideas through image, uh, film, radio poster, catchy slogans and leaflets. And the enemies of Nazi or Germans, they were also stereotyped. Propaganda films were also there for hatred of Jews like the infamous film The Eternal Jew. The orthodox Jews were stereotyped. They were shown with uh, flowing beards and wearing the kaftans. But in fact, Germans and Jews, you cannot differentiate between them. They were so blended because it was a highly assimilated uh, community. 
and Jews were referred to as vermin, rats and pests, even compared with rodents. Actually, you know, they were marked as undesirable and this because they have so much hatred against them. This is a uh, picture showing how they see or foresee the Jews. That is, money is God for the Jews. This is the money a Jew is setting. In order to earn money, the Jew or Jews commit crimes. Jews does not rest until he can sit on a big sack of money until he has become the king of money. This is what their idea is. There are certain uh, leaflets also in order to praise the praise Hitler and this is National Socialism. This is a Nazi past, uh, party poster of 1920s and this asked workers to vote for Hitler, the frontline soldier. So what were the event? Let us uh, go back and revisit them. August 1, 1914, the first world war started. On November 9, 1918, war ended and Germany capitulates. On November 9, 1918, there was Weimar Republic proclamation. On 28 June 1919, there was a treaty of at Versailles. Treaty of Versailles, it is being called. On January 30, 1933, Hitler becomes the Chancellor of Germany. On September 1, 1939, Germany now invade Poland and Second World War began. On January, uh, on June 22, 1941, now German invades the USSR. And June 23, 1941, Jews were mass murdered. And then on December 8, 1941, United States joined the Second World War. And January 27, 1945, Soviet troops liberate Auschwitz. And May 8, 1945, Hitler uh, and the German army loses and allied forces they uh, were victorious in Europe. So they were ordinary people and they were crime against humanity. As we saw that especially Jew they were being brutally killed gas chambers and uh, you know they were went to they were sent to the the gas chambers and killed. So most of the people, you know, there is a very special thing one one uh, Jew said that once the war ends, just let me live for half an hour. I want to tell the world that what the Nazis have done to us. One one uh, you know person said, uh, Pastor Nimoller. He said, I'll show you with the picture. Now he is here. First, the Nazis came for the communist. He said, I am not communist. They took away the communist. They came for the social democrats. He said, I am not social democrat. They took away the social democrat. Then they came for the trade union. Trade unionist. He said, I am not trade unionist. They took the trade unionist. Then they came for Jews. He said, I am not Jew. They took away the Jew. And when they came for me, he was alone because all others have been taken away. So this was the idea. We, we you know, see various uh, being books being written like the Third Reich of Dreams, how Na Nazis stereotyped Jews and what was Jews because sources are there. Here is a, a picture of inhabitants of the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, the Jews collected documents and placed them in three milk cans. If you see, these are the cans along with uh, the containers. So as as uh, destruction seemed imminent, these containers were buried in the cellars of the building 1943 and this was later discovered in 1950. But Denmark knew about the Jews and he, uh, the German, uh, what they are going to Jew, do with the Jews. So this is the board they used, the Denmark people used to take away the, their Jews from Germany. So what uh, Germans did, uh, one of the killing operations, you know, the Nazi killing operations, we call it as Holocaust. So as I said, one of the persons said, just 
just let me live for half an hour. I wanted to tell the world what they did to us. So after the war only, the world came to know that what Germany or Nazi people were doing with their citizens, good citizens and undesirable citizens. And in the meantime, we also get some sources like Mahatma Gandhi writes to Hitler, then uh, Adolf Hitler uh, replies also. So this is all about what happened in Europe at that time, the First World War, in between and Second World War and how Nazi and Germany came into being and who were responsible for the World War. Now it is, it's up to you that to decide that Hitler did it for its country and uh, how it is perceived, bad person, good person, but this is the history. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.